Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the October the 7th Dare County Board of Commissioners <laughs> meeting. What an absolutely gorgeous fall day we have with us today. Thank you all for being here. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call on the Reverend Hendricks for an invocation. Ms. Hendricks, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you Appreciate for the privilege. Thank you. Let us be in the attitude of prayer. Creative and creating God, we give you praise today for your power to bring life into being with all its diversity and beauty, for the creation of intelligence and wisdom, the creation of discernment and even choice, we give you our gratitude. Seeking your gifts this morning, we lift our commissioners to you as you have chosen them to make difficult decisions for our common good. Encourage them, renew and refresh them for their work. Guide and lead them in their discernment, especially in the education and health and care of our community's children and youth and families. Help them speak for the voiceless and the vulnerable, especially this tender and delicate creation you have made. We also ask your strength upon the work of those who support the commissioners. We pray for custodians and clerks, administrators and assistants. Guide and lead them. And we pray today especially for the judicial and criminal systems confronting difficult decisions and situations. May your hand protect and defend and bring justice to all, for all who care for us, for those who protect and defend us and guard us, who heal and help us, we pray your blessings. God, we ask this day your grace for we seek to serve you and glorify you in all that is said and decided and done. Again, we thank you for your presence in our midst, for we pray in the power of your love and promises. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you Reverend. <coughs> May you stand for the prayer. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> See, we have with us this morning the uh, uh, chairman of the Board of Education, Ms. B. Bass Knight. B, thank you for you being here this morning and, and um, uh, school staff, and, and um, thank you once again for being here. Uh, County Manager. Yes, sir. Uh, item one on the agenda is opening remarks from the chairman. Okay, I'll try to try to be brief. I know that uh, we've got a pretty full agenda, and a number of us are uh, leaving right after this meeting to head to Raleigh for um, um, affordable housing um, uh, conference uh, for the next couple of days. Um, the first, uh, the second of October. Um, the capital improvement project uh, committee met just to go over some uh, uh, animal shelter and uh, College of the Albemarle um, additions uh, that, that we're lo looking to do uh, on behalf of the county. And and uh, just want to let you know that the um, CIP met, meeting met and did uh, quite a bit of research on, on uh, both of these uh, two items, and, and we'll be addressing that a little bit later. Uh, in this in this meeting um, uh, this morning uh, on Thursday October the third Dare Center um, celebrated hard to believe its tenth anniversary tenth anniversary the Dare Center and I had the uh, pleasure of attending and um, I, I need to share some pretty remarkable uh, statistics uh, with you concerning the uh, Dare Center. In 2018 alone, some 16,000 people walked through that <laughs> facility behind us. 16,000. Uh, they serve an average of about 100 people a day. 
And since its opening on October the 19th of 2009, 30,927 events have taken place in that facility. Just a phenomenal uh, vision that the folks had some 10 years ago to promote the um, building of this facility uh, in Dare County. And I'll give you another uh, quite interesting stat. 1.6 million hours of physical classes uh, have taken place in that um, uh, facility as well. 1.6 million hours. So a great, uh, a great asset to our county and uh, to the citizens of Dare County. I, I need to um, uh, just um, uh, recognize uh, the, what's taken place over there uh, with uh, Ms. Pace and, and uh, the, her directorship of that over 10 years, the volunteers and the work that goes on over there is just, uh, just phenomenal and, and uh, can't be um, more proud of a facility throughout our county that our citizens can use. Um, third item I have this morning is uh, uh, finally have a FEMA declaration that was issued on uh, October the 4th for Hurricane Dorian. Um, I know that um, uh, the governor requested this uh, on September the 13th. Uh, he, did, he amended it on the 21st, and uh, our federal coordinator, uh, Elizabeth Turner, um, worked on this with our folks, and this was issued on October the 4th. There's three areas, individual assistance. Uh, they're certainly uh, still working on that with individuals and households, and it's under review. Then there's public assistance, which would be assistance for emergency work and repairs or replacement for disaster-damaged facilities, and it's a number of counties, uh, Brunswick, Carteret, Craven, Currituck, Dare, Dublin, Hyde, Jones, New Hanover, Pamlico, Pender, Sampson, Terrell, and Washington counties. And then the third area is hazardous, hazardous mitigation uh, program, and that's assistance for action taken to prevent and reduce long-term risk to life and property from natural hazards in all areas of the state in North Carolina are eligible to apply for this assistance under the hazardous uh, mitigation plan. So we're happy to report that um, that, that declaration um, ha has uh, certainly been issued. The um, fourth item is, um, I mentioned this earlier, uh, a number of us board members will be leaving right after this meeting to um, uh, head to Raleigh uh, for North Carolina <coughs> Affordable Housing <coughs> Conference. And so we're anxious to uh, uh, be there. As most of you know, Dare County uh, is working very, very diligently uh, to try to uh, find ways to uh, bring efficient housing uh, to our uh, unincorporated Dare community, and we're encouraging our municipalities to do the same. So I'm hoping that uh, we can uh, certainly get some, uh, some good information from this conference that we'll attend in Raleigh for the next two days. And then finally, um, um, our deb debris removal from Hurricane Dorian. Uh, I'm happy to report that uh, inside Collington, inside the gates of Collington, uh, they finished uh, the pickups there uh, this past Friday. Uh, Collington's all done. Uh, outside the gate there in Collington, we started uh, there on, on Friday the 4th, and um, we'll will work until we uh, get that completed. They're out there working uh, this week. Uh, wine cheese, uh, we started last week. We'll continue to work there on a regular basis. Uh, Roanoke Island and, Manny, uh, and the uh, area Manio uh, and Mans Harbor, uh, we're starting this week, starting this morning to work on those. And um, I spoke uh, with Shana this morning uh, early. Uh, she's headed to um, Hatteras uh, this morning to meet with our debris contractor. Uh, they, they're trying to set a plan to work on uh, to pick up the uh, white goods. But I know uh, Commissioner Couch, I spoke with him earlier this morning, 
It's been going very well on Harris Island. They've been down there for over a week or more, really, really working hard to pick up the debris. And um, I'm happy to see that uh, we've really had no major complaints. Uh, but we, uh, we know that this is a lot of work and a lot of debris to be picked up. And we've got a really, really good uh, contractor that's uh, doing that. I know, uh, Commissioner Count, you care to uh, make any comments uh, with respect to that? Going smooth. Good. Can't wait for them to be done. Good. So <laughs> anyhow, so that's where we are with our debris. And, and um, I know um, we, we wanted to start in the heaviest hit areas first so that we could get all that going. I know I appreciate the folks on Roanoke Island and Mans Harbor and their patience, uh, but they're, we'll be, they're out this week work, working all week to uh, pick that stuff up and, and debris up. And once again, we wanted to get the hardest hit areas picked up first. So um, continue to have some a uh, little bit of patience, and hopefully in the next week or two, uh, we'll be back to a uh, normal uh, normalcy when it when it comes to uh, the what it how pleasant it looks on the side of the road without any debris. That completes my remarks, uh, County Manager. Uh, that brings us to item two, which is the presentation of the county service pins. We have just one this morning, and if Michelle Gray would come forward to receive a 15-year pin from Trey Powell. <coughs> good morning, Trey. Michelle, good morning. Well, good morning. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, gentlemen, commissioners, thanks so much. It's a privilege to be here today. Uh, from Dare County Communications, way over there at the EOC, out by the airport, I bring to you Shelly today with 15 years of service. When I was thinking about something to say for Shelly, I was thinking about family. And she started from a broadcast radio family a long time ago, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Came to us a little 2014-ish, 2015, and has hit the ground runner. Four. I'm sorry. I got my, <laughs> got my math backwards. 2004. Um, the second part of her family that came to mind was just being inside of a law enforcement public service family. She's married to a deputy. She's got a brother, two brother-in-laws. They're also in law enforcement, so she knows the role of that and provides a, a nice stable home for that and a good listening ear whenever that needs to happen. The third part of the family is what she brings to us over at Dare Central Communications. Um, always there with a kind word. Fills a role that can only be, be filled by Shelly, and we're really proud to have her on board. And we thank her for her 15 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Michelle. That means we get another 15, right? That's what I'm planning. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank right you. Thank you. <laughs> Chairman, that brings us to the Employee of the Month, and if Elizabeth Riley would come forward for that presentation. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning. Um, I am happy to be here today to introduce the October Employee of the Month. Will Kelly McPherson come up? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Um, Kelly has worked for Dare County as an administrative, currently she works as an administrative specialist, um, also known as a floater. She's in general services. Kelly's been with Dare County for 14 years. She started here in May of 2005 <coughs> as a custodian, and then she was promoted to a floater in June of 2008. As a floater, Kelly serves all departments. She um, is everywhere, actually. She is very versatile and covers many areas. She um, does data entry and tax. She does the front desk of social services. She does administrative support in home health and hospice. She covers the mail. She covers the front desk at the administrative <laughs> um, building. She does the front desk in HR. And that's just to name a few. Um, over I the past saying, year. There's she doesn't do. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, there is not. Um, she recently has been in the elections department. And they have been in need because of the number of elections that we've had this year. And um, this nomination comes from the election department. Um, it is stated from the elections director, Michelle Barnes, that Kelly has worked in the elections department this year and has tirelessly given her all. I have placed a load of responsibility on her, and she has taken the task and carried us through three elections, and we are preparing for the fourth this year. Kelly is always willing to, willing to step in and help where it is needed. Elections would not have been able to get through this year of elections without Kelly. 
And also note that I have received numerous calls from the election board members to also thank um, us in general services for allowing her to spend her time down there and help out elections, and she's done a really um, good job. Um, Kelly is a great employee for Dare County. She's a huge asset. Um, she's very smart, and she shows that in all of her work that she does. And thank you, Kelly, for all that you do. And we appreciate you, so thank, thank you. you. This is for you. Kelly, con congratulations. It's one thing about it, you got variety in your job, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> she does. Never a dull moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dare County really does um, have the best staff, and I know that, and I can say that, because I've worked in most departments, and they make my job easy, and I really do love what I do. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Chairman, next is item four on the agenda. Uh, Shannon Rickles is here to make a presentation on the Ocean Guardian School Grant presentation. Shannon, thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having us. Thank you so much. This is a great honor for us to be here today. Well, I'm Shannon Rickles. I'm the program uh, manager for the Ocean Guardian School Program for the Virginia and North Carolina schools. So it's a, a wonderful opportunity for us today to be here to recognize uh, two of the one of the schools. Uh, Ocean Guardian School Program is a program that NOAA started a little over 10 years ago to help teach students and teachers about the ocean and how to conserve it, but they also wanted to not only teach them about ocean conservation, but also how to become involved in their local communities within uh, doing things and projects to be able to conserve their ocean resources. So the Ocean Guardian program came into being, and in 2018, we had several schools here in North Carolina that actually presented pro, uh, proposals for different uh, projects that they wanted to do. We accepted two of them. One was down in Newport, North Carolina, and the other one was here at Cape Hatteras. So today I have with me Clay Teterman, uh, who is the science teacher at Cape Hatteras Secondary School, and his principal, Mrs. Beth Rooks. Uh, so I'm here today to present them with their, with their first year banner because they met all the criteria of their proposal. Uh, Clay put in a proposal last year, last school year, to actually do a, a reduce, redu uh, reduce, reuse, and recycle program. That's one one of the pathways that you can uh, go for an Ocean Guardian school. And he did a great job despite many different little hiccups with Cape Hatteras recycling and hurricanes last year. Uh, so he did a great job in meeting all that criteria. So the very first thing I'd like to do is present the school with their Ocean Guardian school banner, which means that they are an Ocean Guardian school uh, year one. And they can get these banners every year that they remain in the program. And you can remain in the program either through being funded or even without funds. If I can get my ribbon off here, sorry. Thought it would be easy. So Clay and Miss Brooks, I present you guys with the first Ocean Guardian School banner. Sure. And Clay was awesome when uh, putting in a second proposal this year for the school, and he's done another great job. Isn't that cool? And so the school can proudly display that, and uh, as they get a banner each year, they can just put them side by side, and it shows all the years that they've been participating in the Ocean Guardian School program. Well, another thing that, that Clay did is he put in a second proposal for this year, and this year he wants to not only continue the recycling program that he started last year, because it was very really important to Clay and the school to begin that program because the kids down there didn't recycle within school and a lot of them didn't even recycle at home. So he thought it was very important to be able to educate them about the purpose and the need for recycling and reducing and reusing. So it was a great program. He wants to continue that, but in addition, he wants to also try to end the sing, uh, reduce the single-use plastic problem that we have in our society today with, with water bottles. So they are installing this year a refill station, uh, and that's going to be another great project that he's going to do. So today, we're also here to award him uh, $3,000 in grant funds to be able to do that. Absolutely. Come hold the, the banner in the middle. Okay. <laughs> yeah, everybody. Group yeah, job. come on up here, B. <laughs> Margaret. 
Group shot. Anybody come right here. Yeah, Danny. <laughs> this is good Thank stuff. This is really good. Well, congratulations. Well, very Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much. Yes, it's our pleasure. Thank you, Bring us to item five on the agenda, which is public comment. Uh, before we go to public comment, anybody that received an award this morning, if you would go right outside for Dorothy to get a picture, that would be good. Looks like maybe everybody's already gone. Um, ladies and gentlemen, now's the time that's been set aside for public comment. If you have public comment this morning and you've not signed up, please raise your hand. When you do, I'll recognize you. Uh, please then come to the podium, state your name and where you're from. Please limit your comments to five minutes. There's a green light on the podium that comes on when your time begins. There's a yellow light on the podium that will come on when you have about a minute left. And when the red light comes on, you need to conclude your remarks. Um, first on the sign-up sheet, I have Michael Hurt. Welcome, Mr. Hurt. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, so I'm here today. My name is Michael J. Hurt. I'm with Dan Co Builders. We've got some handouts for you. If you don't mind, I'd like to hand, get those sent to you. Yes, sir. Um, uh, this is my project manager. This is Mr. Claiborne Woods. Uh, we're here today to provide assistance um, to the community and the citizens of Dare County that were negatively impacted by the Hurricane Doran. Um, the best way that, through my experiences in reaching the community, is to reach its elected representation. Um, so my company, Danco Builders, is an unlimited license design general contract and firm based out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Um, we have an extensive background in residential, commercial, and remediation construction. Uh, we provided you with a handout of information of our full service team, which includes architectural, structural, remediation, civil, and PM&E. Um, as, represent, as representatives of the citizens of Dare County, we'd welcome your assistance in locating reputable subcontractors that can help us in both Dare County and Hyde County. Um, we're already working at Ocracoke, and we'll be visiting uh, the island this afternoon, and we plan on visiting Hatteras as well once this meeting is over with. Um, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, take care. And if we can help be of assistance, please let us know. Well, thank you, Mr. Hurt, and we appreciate uh, this information It's uh, and sharing this with us. Thank you, sir. Next is Claiborne Woods. That's me. I was with him. Okay. okay. Um, next is B. Bass Knight. <clears throat> Welcome, B. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman Woodard, Commissioners. Um, I am B. Bass Knight, and I reside in Manio. And I'm here today. Um, I serve as the chair of the Dare County Board of Education, and I'm here today on behalf of the Dare County Schools, along with Margaret Lawler and a lot of our school folks today. Um, we're here to say a great big thank you to each of you, Commissioners, Mr. Alton, Mr. Uh, uh, Clawson. Dorothy, I, all of you who had something to do with the efforts to support our schools. And when you support our schools, you've supported our students and our teachers and our staffs. Um, you, of course, provide tremendous financial support for our schools throughout the year. And this year, in the wake of Hurricane Dorian, which left our schools, especially Cape Hatteras Secondary School, with over $3 million in damage, uh, you stepped up to the plate with the passage, the crafting and passage of the interlocal agreement between Dare County and the Dare County Board of Education. Uh, this agreement allowed our board to move very quickly to contract with a roofing company, 
to put the roof back on the uh, media center at Cape Hatteras Secondary School and a remediation company right away to go in and take care of any water issues that we had in the school. By allowing us to move so swiftly, we'll be able to return our schools to a, our, our students to a complete school and a safe school as soon as possible. You know, we are extremely grateful for this Board of Commissioners and I hope you realize that we consider you a very important and very vital partner in the education system in Dare County and we appreciate you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you, B. Thank you, Thank B. You. <laughs> Any other public comment this morning? Any public comment from Buxton? Hearing none, then we would move on from public comment. Um, <laughs> next is item six on the agenda. This is a public hearing. This is with regard to fiscal year 2021, the NCDOT 5311 and 5310 uh, program grant applications. Um, we just talked about the rules of public comment. Is there anyone that would like to speak to that issue this morning? Hearing none, is there anyone in Buxton that would like to speak to that issue this morning? Chairman, hearing none with, with that, then uh, that public hearing would be closed. Um, and I think Sharon, is it right? They need to approve that grant application? Uh, yes, sir. They need yep. to also act on resolution and support them. Okay. It's a pleasure so, of the board. Move to, to approve. approve. There's a motion on the floor by Commissioner House and the Vice Chair to approve. Is there a second? I second it. This second uh, by uh, Commissioner Tobin. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign? Motion carried unanimous. That brings us to item seven on the agenda. This is a preliminary assessment resolution for the Leslie Lane Water Project. You all approved us going forward some time ago. Um, this is the first step in the assessment process where we go in and uh, assess the residents around Leslie Lane uh, to uh, pay for the cost of that project. Uh, there's a public hearing that's required, and I'm trying to think of the day, and that would be on November the 4th. Um, and so if you approve this resolution, then you're authorizing us to move forward. You're setting that public hearing. Uh, the amount that's in there is an estimated amount. You'll come in later and do a final assessment resolution where when Pat and his staff have the final actual cost from the bids, then you'll do that. Um, this is not mandatory, but in that resolution, we've used a seven-year payment plan. Uh, we did that because we've done, like, the Roanoke Island assessment, and we've done others where we've allowed our citizens seven years to pay uh, the assessment amount. We assume that's what you would do here. You do not have to. You could make it all due immediately, but we, we did it like we've done it in the past. So just want to point that out and I assume that we'll go forward. So if you pass this resolution, you're also authorizing the public hearing and you're authorizing Pat and his staff to, to move forward with this project. Um, Pat is here for any questions that you might have. Do I need to add anything to that, Pat? Okay. Um, with that said, it'd be uh, for you to pass that resolution. All right. Pleasure of the board. Motion to approve. Second. Um, I believe I had a, a motion to approve by uh, Commissioner Bateman and Couch, and then a second by Commissioner House. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign? Motion carries unanimous. Thank you, Pat. That was hard, wasn't it? <laughs> um, item 8 on the agenda is a text amendment to the C3 Zoning District, and Noah Gilms here to make that presentation. Good morning, Noah. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners. Brent Johnson has submitted a zoning amendment request to amend the C3 zoning district. Mr. Johnson is seeking the addition of commercial storage yards to the list of uses offered in the area's zone C3. The C3 district applies to portions of Roanoke Island, Avon, and Buxton. Any text amendment to the C3 district would apply to all land zone C3. The Dare County zoning ordinance already defines commercial storage yards as follows. An open site that provides space for a fee for the storage of boats, boat trailers, recreational vehicles, travel trailers, and campers, automobiles, utility trailers, contractors, towable storage trailers, and similar types of vehicles and equipment. This does not include the dry stack storage of boats. 
The current permitted uses in the C3 zoning district are already more intensive, such as boat engine repair and maintenance, vehicle storage impoundment facilities, and biodiesel fuel production. The Dare County Planning Board reviewed the text amendment at their September 9, 2019 meeting. The Planning Board found that the proposed text amendment is consistent with the 2009 Dare County Land Use Plan. For the proposed text amendment, staff recommends using language that is currently used in the Skyco Neighborhood Commercial District that allows for commercial storage yards. A copy of that language has been attached for the board's review. It is staff's recommendation that a public hearing be scheduled for October 21st, 2019 board meeting. A draft motion has been included with this memo for the board's consideration. Thank you, Noah. Um, is there a motion to um, uh, set a public hearing for October 21 at 530? I move that a public hearing be scheduled for 530 p.m. on October 21st, 2019. All right, motion on the floor by Commissioner House and Vice Chair. Uh, is there a second? Second. Seconded by uh, Commissioner Ross. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, then we'll be those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you, Noel. Thank you. Chairman, item nine on the agenda is authority to allow <coughs> Matt Hester, our IT director, to sign a document on behalf of the county uh, with Apple. Apple, uh, for us to build platforms of apps, if you will, that you can do county stuff on people's phones through the Apple programs, um, we have to have somebody on the staff to be able to develop those apps. Apple requires somebody to sign to be responsible and all that. Typically, I sign those things and do that, but in this particular case, when they come back and forth with all the app stuff, it doesn't make sense for me to take it, listen to the guys at Apple, try to relate it back to Matt, and then Matt come back and figure out how to do it. So what we're asking... Dana would get lost in translation. Definitely. <laughs> uh, so what we're asking is that you all authorize on this particular contract that Matt be the authorized representative of the county uh, to sign the contract with Apple for the uh, authority to, to build on the Apple platform. All right. What's the pleasure of the board? I'd move to approve it. Okay. There's a motion on the floor by Commissioner House to approve. I'll second. This is seconded by Commissioner Bateman. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Matt. Um, next is the uh, connecting channel or the South Ferry Channel down in Hatteras. As you know, each year we try to dredge that twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall. Uh, the fall dredging season is rapidly approaching. I think the windows open up at the end of October. Uh, and we're trying to have all of our things in place to allow them to go in there and dredge. Uh, the channel has held up remarkably well. Um, it does need some work. It needs some work around the edges. Uh, we have some money there already that's left over. And what we're asking you to do is to, I think, it authorize us to provide our share of the funding to do the project that's going forward. Our share would be $49,785. Uh, and then... Uh, for a total contribution of 136000 in in that project. So with the money that we have there, plus what we've just asked you to add, that would allow them to begin. Uh, we have to have that money in place before they start, so we're approving that now so that in the end of October when the dredge is here, uh, they can begin that work. Pleasure of the board. Motion to approve the $49,785. Second. There's a motion on the floor by Commissioner Tobin. It's been seconded by Commissioner House and the Vice Chair. Any further discussion? Hearing none, then those in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. So we're looking at the uh, hopefully the end of the month. Some, sometime late. Well, the window doesn't open until the end of October, so we're looking early to November, the end of November yeah. time. Gotcha. Good. Um, Next is a item 11. This is an interlocal agreement between us and the town of Manio. Um, as you know, we've recently completed or almost completed uh, the demolition project downtown of all those old buildings on our old admin site. Um, we've been talking with Manio for a long time about doing uh, a Manio Commons, and they're in the process of doing grant applications. However, in order to get their grant applications, they need some 
legal authority to be using that property for the per, for the parking and the park purposes that they have in mind and that we've talked about. And so this is the MOA that, that does that. It, we are giving them or leasing to them or agreeing to allow them to use that property. The document that you have in front of you is a 20-year term. Um, I learned on, I don't know, Thursday or Friday, I've got word from the state that the PARDIF grant, that's the Parks and Recreation Trust Fund grant program, is open. There's an opportunity for Manio to apply to get grants to help them pay for that project. However, the part if folks require a 25-year term rather than a 20-year term. So we're going to ask that you allow us to amend this when we do the final version, if you approve it today, to make it the 25-year term. Um, there's a buyout in it. Uh, what that buyout in it says is that in the event that we in the future find a need for that property, that we can take it back. However, to the extent that we're 15 years in and part of says we've got to give them back 10 25ths of the grant that they got, then we would reimburse them for that. So we can buy them out of their grants if we have to, if, should we ever decide that we need that property uh, in the future for something that the county wanted to do on that property. Um, and then the last thing, you know, we had talked and we've looked at parking and one of our biggest concerns on the property was that it be used for parking uh, uh, to help alleviate some of the concerns for the, the Manio businesses in the downtown. I think Manio agrees with that. Um, we looked at a number of configurations on the property. One configuration, if you paved every square inch of it and I think maybe bought out a piece the church owned or something like that, you could get up, what was it, a hundred parking places? Hundred trees. Uh, they're not buying out any property and the, and the the property owners, the only property will be used is the property that was ours. And so it won't accommodate that number of places. But the agreement doesn't specify any particular number of places. Um, in talking with Commissioner Overman, uh, he suggested that maybe we put in there that we put it at, make a limit, say it's got to have 65 parking places unless you all approve difference. If they came in with a plan and said, hey, it only accommodate. 59, we could always approve that. It would give us the authority, but it would give them a goal to use our property to try to make a difference in downtown Mania. Have we spoken to them about this? I have. Yeah. Are they aligned with us that, yeah, we want to put a maximum number of parking well, spaces if they, we can? Well, they want, and I don't, they want, there needs to be some amount of green area. There needs to be right. some grass and some trees and some, it needs to look nice. It's their center of their town. Until they get all that worked out and how much money they got, they don't know if they're going to have 65, 64, 58, whatever. So we're, we chose a number that we can work to. I don't know. You'll have to say whether you are concerned if it doesn't hit right on that number. But that seems to be a reasonable number. Uh, and talking to their manager, that felt like a reasonable number to him. Uh, and so that's the number that we came up with. I was just curious why we would put a number out and tell them to meet it where it's really their project in their town. Because they know well, parking. The, 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 yeah, the but I mean, their time. motivation is to do that. So I'm trying to figure out if we have well, different motivations. Well, well, I'm not sure what motivation is. When we first started talking about this, uh, as Bobby mentioned, in, in several of the designs that came forth initially, there was up to 100 parking spaces. That was, as he said, utilizing the whole the whole footprint there, including house uh, that that's a private home that's there now. Obviously, that's that's not going to work. Those folks uh, don't have any intention of, of leaving that property. So, um, but parking is an issue, and one of the things that we initially was talking about was increasing significantly the number of parking spaces made available down there. Um, I, I think we need to give them a target. And I think, uh, given the reduced uh, uh, square footage there to to build upon, 65 is a reasonable number for them to target. And uh, as Bobby says, if they can't if they can't reach that, um, then they need to come back to us to to yeah, see if we're. I, in I'm not disagreeing with, with your point at all. I'm just puzzled by the apparent. Potential adversarial situation with the town of Manio? No, it's no, 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 no. But we're giving them a target. No. It feels L listen, arbitrary. well, they're going to be designing. That they're going to have an architect come in and design yeah. a, a a a park, a, a green space with parking, <laughs> or a parking with green space. Which is the right second is, is a preferred thing for me because that is Manio has a parking problem. 
and this is oh, a, yeah, we all agree a, a on great that, sure. yeah a great, a great chance to to help that situation uh, significantly Agreed again yeah yeah uh, just our relationship with them has been great i mean the, that's what i thought too has been, it is not adversarial not even close not even close um, it's all been very right uh, that's why i was surprised by hearing and we're going to give them a goal to hit and all that sort of thing um i guess the question would be we we haven't been involved really in the design process. And we've told them essentially what you said. Within reason, we don't really, it's not the center of our town, it's the center of your town, and you need to have it look like you all want it to look. But if they came in and they won't, and I'm not suggesting anybody's even said that they would, but if for some reason they said we only want 30 parking places, if we don't have something in here, we don't have any way to weigh in and say, now wait a minute, that's not reasonable, that's not what we were thinking. So. Our thought was, let's just put what we were thinking in there, and then everybody knows what everybody's thinking, and then if it needs to be different, then we'll change it. Okay. And, and, and uh, Commissioner Ross, it could, <coughs> it could even be higher, because uh, the initial concept of this was, yeah. you know, we struggled to try to sell that property and do something with it. And then then uh, the mayor uh, approached us and, and said, you know, we're, we're in dire need of, of parking, and, and as, as the conversations grew, uh, it became some green space involved in that as well. So they want as many parking oh, spots yeah, as they yeah, I agree. Who, I agree. That's as they, just, yeah, they want yeah. as many as they can get in there as well. So, um, and it, it may very well be higher than the 65. We just felt like it was important that uh, we at least put a number in there to form the shoot for. So. With that being said, uh, any other questions by the board? What's the pleasure of the board? I move to approve the uh, MOA lease uh, agreement with a stipulation that uh, we go to 25 years with regard to the part of grant and that we uh, establish a uh, desired minimum of 65 uh, parking spaces. Second. Okay, there's a motion on the floor by the vice chair, and it's been seconded by Commissioner Bateman. Floor is open for further discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign? Motion carries you Mr. Chairman, I know yes, it's too late now, but I would like to recommend the county manager for Karis School of Negotiating Training at a dollar a year. I thought we might be able to negotiate. That's outrageous. It's, you know, <laughs> I, was, I had my fingers crossed that Bobby could wrench out a dollar and a half, but we'll live with a dollar. <laughs> we can do it if you make me twist the arm. <laughs> uh, item 12 is uh, some changes to the capital improvement plan, some updates based on the new information we have on a number of projects. I'm going to give you a brief overview, and then Dave's going to come in and tell you exactly what we need to do this morning. Uh, I'll start uh, with the easiest one. Uh, that's the Health and Human Services Building. We sent out the uh, RFQs for uh, construction management managers at risk. Uh, we only got one response for that remodeling project, and that was from A.H. Chesson, or A.R. Chesson. Um, and we considered, uh, Dave and I considered, and, and Dustin, you know, sending stuff out again. Uh, we waited, we had a CIP meeting, took it to the Capital Improvement Committee, talked about it, talked about, thought about sending it out again to maybe get more, see if we could elicit more responses. But when we got to the end of our discussion, we've used AR Chess in, in the past. Um, they've worked closely with our architects, Oakley Collier, in the past. Um, they built the DARE Center over here for us in the past. And our experience with them has been really good. Um, and so, we didn't know that we improved the game very much by soliciting more uh, responses and everyone had a chance to uh, respond if they wanted to because we'd sent it out and published the notice and did all the things we did. We've got a competent uh, construction company, one that we work with and that we're satisfied with. So rather than waste the time to send it all out again, uh, the Capital Improvement Committee recommends to you all that we approve uh, AR Chesson as the construction management at risk for the health and human services project. And you would need to authorize that this morning if you agree. Did, did you have? Yeah, we want to do this one first and then we'll just go to the next yeah. one. Yeah, if we if Yeah, we so can. move yeah. that we appoint AR yeah. Second on that. All right. There's a motion on the floor by Commissioner Ross and it's been seconded by Commissioner Couch. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Uh, the next one is just kind of a, a heads up to let you know what's happening. Uh, on the animal shelter contract, um, we've got, where are we, Dave? Almost 60% design? It's about 65. 60, we're getting <laughs> near the end of the design phase. Uh, our construction management uh, at risk, our contractor has been out soliciting bids uh, throughout yes, our bid estimates throughout uh, North Carolina and Virginia and locally. They actually went to our local um, um, Home Builders Association and posted it, and they sent out to all of our local subs as well to bid on the various trades to, to do that. Um, where we are with that project is, you know, we had chosen a number out of, we had put like $3 million in, in our capital improvement plan to cover that without really knowing uh, what it was going to cost. And, and we're getting these estimates in. Those estimates are coming in at around four and a half or something like that. Is that right, Dave? Um, and so it's going to be a little more than what uh, we guessed when we started. We didn't really have any numbers that we were working off of other than we were guessing based on other projects. Uh, we've gone out and done some research throughout the state of other animal shelter projects. We're at or about the average of what we saw from projects in, in the state at the cost for this one. Um, we've asked them to do some uh, value engineering and they've done some things that change some roof lines and do that to maybe reduce that cost a little bit. Uh, but I just want to let you know that's about where it seems to be going. Uh, we won't know for sure until we actually bid it and the bids are going to start here shortly and so you know we'll get real true numbers uh, once that's done and you'll have to come back and approve those uh, at that time. I'll tell you that with the capital improvement fund that you all created uh, during this budget cycle, uh, the funding is there and it's available for that. It keeps our fund balances in the capital improvement fund uh, within the limits that you all had set, which are the safe limits uh, for that fund. Uh, it does not impact the tax rates. So there's nothing going to change with regard to the taxpayers. It, 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 again, we've got a capital improvement plan that we've set all this stuff out in and, and it covers it and so there's no issues there. So that's, I don't think that requires any action, right Dave? Uh, but that's where we are and just <coughs> wanted you to be aware that that's where we were headed with that. Um, I'll tell you that Commissioner Ross has worked extremely hard on this project, not only with trying to work through the financing and work through, you know, the bid estimates and all that, but also, you know, in the planning part of this, um, I think he'll agree that what we've done is it's going to be a nice building, but it's modest in the sense that it is exactly what's needed. There's no frills, no bells, no whistles, nothing uh, beyond what's normal. Um, come to find out there's some things in animal shelters that are expensive. Uh, the mechanicals are expensive. Uh, in this building right here, uh, you, when you cool the air, you take this air out, you run it back through and you cool it again and you circulate it. So once you get it to temperature, you don't really have to do much to it to cool it again. In an animal shelter, you have to turn over 100% of the air. So you, right. you take the inside air, you exhaust it to the outside, you bring in outside air when it's 90 degrees and cool it down to whatever temperature you want it. Uh, that system is huge and it's expensive and it's way more expensive to do some of the mechanical and electrical stuff Operation in those. Cost. And um, those are the things that are kind of driving those prices to make them higher than, say, if you were building a building like this. Uh, again, with that said, we'll get the exact bids here shortly and, and when we get them, we'll bring them to you. Uh, any questions about that? About that one? Peter. Yep. Okay, then lastly is the, is the COA project. We've been working really hard on this for a while. Uh, when we started this project, we, we had some money from uh, the state bond, a, a small amount of money, and we agreed we'd put some money with that. Um, our whole goal in doing this was to be sure the students in uh, Dare County could go to COA and get their degrees within the two-year time and not have to leave Dare County to do that. Um, and we also wanted to be sure that we did what the community thought we needed to do. And that's not just the community citizens, but the business community as well, to be sure we're training our kids uh, for what needs to be done here in Dare County and what they see as those needs. 
Uh, as a result, uh, the chairman appointed committee. It was chaired by uh, Commissioner Couch. And we had multiple public input meetings to hear from the community about what was needed and what we wanted and what should be in the programming and all those kind of things. Um, subsequent to those meetings, we met extensively with the folks at the College of the Albemarle and said, okay, here's what we're hearing. You know, if you're going to do this, what do you need to do that? If you're going to do this, what do you need to do that? And, and, and so on. Uh, so we got all that data together, and then we had meetings with the architect and us and COA and took all that data together to see what it would take to, to do that. And the result of that project, of those, all that work was, was that if we're going to do what the community says we need to do and what we think we need to do to have a program that can take care of the trades that we had talked about extensively and also allow our, on the academic side, our kids to go through COA in two years and get out, then it's going to take a building that's larger than what we thought in the beginning. Uh, in the beginning, uh, we had a 26,000 square foot estimate and that estimate was done by COA and it was essentially to duplicate what they have uh, over here uh, on the, at the Twyford campus and then allow a little bit of growth in that. Um, after having all these meetings, getting all the input, doing all that, if we're going to do what we said we were going to do and we're going to meet the needs of the community as the community told us that they needed, then we're about 10,000 square feet short. That building's going to need to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 36,000 square feet in order to accomplish that. And so where we are in the process now is we've got to make a decision. Are we going to do that? Are we going to do it in phases? Are we going to uh, build 26,000 square feet? Are we going to build 36? Or we, how are we going to handle that? Um, that 36,000 square feet did not include uh, any renovation to the uh, Fine Arts Building, professional uh, arts, and or is it professional arts building? I'm sorry, the professional arts building that's there that's going to be there once we finish the demolition. Uh, certainly, that's going to need to be painted or something to make it fit in with whatever the design is of the rest of the campus. Um, the net result of that is you're looking at about a 14 million dollar project. Um, once again. We're okay there. Uh, we had programmed more money than we anticipated in the capital improvement plan. We recognized that probably that you know eight million or eight and a half million wasn't going to build very much campus, and so in our capital improvement plan, we have the funding available to do that. Um, it, as with the animal shelter, um, if we want, if you all want to go ahead and do it all in one go, we can do that. Uh, we can do it. We can keep our fund balance in the capital improvement plan at the at the 25% that we require, and without any problem there either. Uh, it has no impact on the tax rate. Um, we're using funds that uh, were left over from the previous fiscal years to kind of fill in the gap, and so <coughs> fiscally we're fine. It, it doesn't require any tax new tax money. It doesn't require any impact to the tax base. Uh, and it doesn't really change any of the programs that are already in the CIP because our, our capital improvement fund, you all and, and Dave and, and uh, Doug Carter in our plan and have really done a, a very good job and it's a, it, to think about these things and to be sure we can fund the things that we do. So if we go forward, then we can do it. If you choose to do it in uh, phases, we can do that. Uh, and if you, the third option, I suppose, is to do 36,000 square feet and cap it at that 14 million and make sure that we include whatever we're going to do in the fine arts building in that number so that the, our number doesn't grow uh, any further. So those are sort of your choices um, and we need guidance because the architect is ready to decide whether she's going to draw what size plan that she's going to draw and we don't know what to tell her until you all tell us which direction to go in. Anything else I need to add to that, Dave? It's 36,500. 36,500 square feet. Uh, you also need to add that the uh, CIP committee uh, recommends that. And, they did. And, <clears throat> and that included the, the professional arts. That's right. The, right. The CIP's right. recommendation was to limit uh, the cost of, to the 14,072,000, I think right. it was, 
uh, and the 36,000 square feet, and that that would then include that would include uh, whatever had to be done to the to the fine arts build or professional arts building to make it fit with the overall campus. And so, we uh, the last thing I tell you I, I forgot to say is we we had hired uh, Ken and Briggs um, as our consultant, and as I told you when you hired him, he's been everything you can be in the community college system. And I asked him to go through all of the things that. The architect had said all the things that our committee had said, and he went through that and sort of proofed what we were hearing. And that 36,000 square feet, he says, is, is about right to do the things that we're talking about doing. He thinks there may be some opportunities to change some sizing here and there in a classroom or here and there in some storage and some things like that to maybe reduce that. Um, our thought was if he's right and we can do that, that provides the funding, if you will, available out of that budget to handle the fine arts work that or the fine arts work that needs to be done on that building uh, so we're kind of we're, I think we're comfortable that we can do that within that those limits that we just talked about so that anyway that was a recommendation uh, of the capital improvement committee based on all that information I've right. got a question um, have they narrowed down exactly what the curriculum and the trades is going to be at um, we there, talked about every one of those one trades of that were in those meetings, uh, and we talked also about the curriculum that's offered for the, on the academic side. And we told the architect basically that we needed to provide and design for flexibility to provide all of that. So maybe we have we have HVAC now because we need them, or we have welding now, but we need them. But five years from now, we may not be able to need any of those, but we need electricians, and so we need to be able to use that space to train electricians. And so it's designed to accommodate all of those things. Uh, academically, I'll just give you an example. It's, it's designed to be flexible and cover all of that as well. Um, we had a big discussion about chemistry and biology. Uh, they require labs, and the labs require hoods, and they require special sinks and all that stuff you see if you've ever been in a chemistry lab or a biology lab. Um, and the original plan had two. This one has one because we went to COA and said, hey, through scheduling, can we do all this with one lab as opposed to having to go to the expense of building two? They said that we could, and so we've programmed that in, and we can do the biology and the chemistry out of the same lab. We've got flex spaces for all the classroom things that we need to do for the other subjects. There's in the proposed plan. Uh, there's uh, online learning so that you can do distance learning in rooms for that uh, as well. There are larger and smaller uh, lecture rooms and so on. So again, uh, through Ken and Briggs and through the architect who has done a number of community college projects, they get it that you got to have space that's adaptable, that is flexible, that the needs today aren't going to be the needs five years from now or 10 years from now, and you know, you're know you building a 50 year building, so you gotta be able to do things easily to change as the needs in the community college change. And so that is all programmed in. That's a long winded answer to your question, but that's how we got where we are. Okay, and so this would probably include the possibility of an expandable footprint to include, and from my industry, a culinary arts program I, of some sort? It, the, the, it will not take nearly all of the campus to do what we're doing. And so there is space uh, available on the site to do whatever the future holds that we need to do at COA. Um, and I'll just tell you, uh, you all approved it, but I don't know if you remember, but in the capital improvement plan, I don't know how many years out, we've got money programmed in. We did it as a placeholder just to say, hey, if we get out here 10 years and we need to expand, can we do it? And the answer is <coughs> yes, yeah, we've got some money uh, in the long-term capital the improvement plan that would allow us to do something uh, at COA in the future if we wanted to. Okay. Any other questions? Pleasure of the board. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the COA project at up to... 36,500 square feet at approximately uh, at a $14 million cap, uh, inclusive of the uh, work to be done at the Professional Arts Building uh, included in that in that amount. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I second. Second by Commissioner Bateman. Any further discussion? 
Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Couch. Yep, thank you. I just got a. We've been talking about uh, the COA plan for four or five years now or better. And uh, we've known going into this, once the rubber hits the road, that we're going to see some costs uh, come with this. And uh, time is money. And if, if we start to hem and haul over this, I think it's going to prove to be even, we're going to have more cost uh, issues to deal with. So I think there's some urgency here. Uh, I think we can do this going forward and, and keep, I'm glad to know that the money's there. I was uh, glad to read what came out of the CIP on that. And uh, with the money being there, uh, my level of uh, comfort with this is is good. Thank you, Commissioner. I, I Commissioner have, Tobin? Yeah, I have one point to make or one question that I would like to feel a little bit more comfortable about. Um, the animal shelter, we projected the $3 million cost, and the bids came in at 4.5. That's a 50% increase over what the estimate was. Um, on this COA project, if we run into something like that, it's a $14 million project, would be a $21 million cost. Are these numbers locked down a little bit better than the... Well, let's back up to the, to the animal shelter. The cost estimates of the animal shelter were done by us. It was we, a wag. We, we picked them out of the sky. We said, Curry Tuck spent $3 million uh, Elizabeth City spent a million and a half to renovate, so two or three million sounds right, and we picked two or three million without having any idea. What, so to say that our costs went over the estimates on the animal shelter assumes we had an estimate. What we did is we found a placeholder to put something in the CIP a year or two ago when we started working on this until we could get real numbers. Well, now we've got real numbers. Um, similarly, when you look at... Uh, <coughs> Uh, the, the COA, we're in better shape, but the same thing occurred then. The numbers that we use in were simply numbers that were given to us two presidents ago at COA when she came in and proposed this, and they had a piece of paper like this, and it said, you know, it's going to cost, we think it can be done for this, and we're like, well, okay, we'll see. And so we, once again, in our planning process, we plug in a number Knowing it's not a real number, uh, we actually inflated that number because we knew it wasn't a real number. And until you actually go out in the world and get the numbers, um, the good news about the COA project is they've actually been to the contractors to get the estimates, uh, and they are com they are telling us that Who's they're they, the architects, the architect, the architect. Yeah, that they're comfortable that that is the number. Um, <coughs> In the animal shelter project, they've also done that, but that's the first time that they've done it is when we the numbers we're using now for that. It's the first time anybody's really been to the market and said, hey, what are those numbers? The numbers we're telling you now for the COA project, again, are the first time anybody's really been to the market to say, what are the numbers for this? Um, the numbers aren't the numbers until you bid them. And so if you're asking me, can they change? Sure, they can, they can get better, they can get worse. Uh, when we actually bid them and the, you know, the, the brick mason says, it's, here's my bid, I'll brick the building for this amount of money and we can add it all up, do we actually know uh, the real cost of it? But from what they're giving us now, uh, they're comfortable with these numbers. We uh, had the exact same question, Jim, because it's okay. on the Capitol Committee. We had the same right. stop, hold, is this... At risk real. in the same way as this <laughs> yeah. really and is this, this is really close. Yeah, yeah. and fourteen is uh, is indeed a valid bid or at least semi bid number that I don't know, Wally. <coughs> I feel pretty comfortable that the fourteen, Bob, yeah, absolutely. is is something that absolutely, absolutely can and would be done. The expanded size of the building to accommodate the programs was a really big um, yeah. improvement or change in the plan. Uh, but the costs basically were about in line with our initial estimates, not too far off. Okay. One other thing, uh, I just want to report that uh, I've had some uh, talks with uh, our school system people, uh, particularly the teachers and the administrators. There's a high level of excitement and anticipation of what we're doing. This, The driving force on this is that we're going to keep Dare County kids here. And uh, if this is an investment that we have to make to ensure that, 
again, I'm, I'm comfortable with the direction we're going. Save here, D. Yeah. <clears throat> Any further questions, comments? Then those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Suppose like that? <laughs> motion carries unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Next is a consent agenda. And on the consent agenda, you have the approval of the minutes from uh, September 16th. You have approval of the minutes from a special meeting on September 16th with regard to the housing workshop. And you have a approval of special minutes from September 23rd for the activation of the debris contract. Uh, you have the Governor's Highway Safety Program Local Government Resolution. You have the Health and Human Services Public Health Division. Emergency <coughs> Overdose Local Mitigation to the Opioid Crisis Grant. Health and Human Services Division, Trillium Funding for Strategic Prevention Framework for Prescription and Drug Projects, and you have an NCDOT right-of-way agreement for the Water Department. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Uh, there's a motion by Commissioner Bateman and Tobin. Um, any further, uh, is there a second? Second. A second by the Vice Chair. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Um, next are your board appointments. You have one this month. You have the Dare County Transportation Board, and you've been requested to appoint uh, Maddie Hernandez Beecham to fill the human services vacancy. Pleasure of the board. Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Tobin to approve to appoint Maddie Hernandez Beecham to uh, fill the Human Services sector vacancy. Any uh, second? Second. Second by the Vice Chair and Commissioner House. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like that. <coughs> Motion carries unanimous. And then your upcoming board appointments in November, <coughs> you have the Older Adult Services Council. You have one term expiring there. In December, the Equalization Review Board has five terms which expire, and the Special Motor Vehicle Evaluation Review Committee has three terms expiring. And in January, you have seven terms on the Tourism Board and two terms on the Working Waterman Commission. Mr. Chairman, that would be your agenda, except that we need a closed session at the appropriate time. Okay, we'll do that after item 15. Um, that brings us to item 15. Commissioner Bateman, would you kick that off today for us, please? Yes, sir. Um, I haven't got a whole lot, but I, one thing I would like to say that, um, um, you know, I've got a little place down in Okokoke, and those folks down there really got beat up, as we all know. And the, what I've seen from talking to the folks down there, and uh, I just feel like we're just so really blessed here, is the fact that they're, not only is their, their houses have been lost, uh, their jobs have been lost, their livelihood. Um, they're losing uh, a lot of their workers because the Latino population, um, they can't draw unemployment. Um, a lot of them cannot because of their <coughs> status as far as immigration is concerned. They're leaving, so they have no workers. We're having trouble getting people to um, uh, do renovations on, on houses and so forth that are rental houses, not counting up houses of people who live down there. So we're very, very, we're just so very blessed up here not being in that position. The long range problem they're going to have down there, and I, I see is 67% of their economy comes from the little island of Ocracoke and Hyde County. Therefore, their budgetary problems in the next two years are going to be pretty tough, serious. even with federal government help yeah. and so forth. They're going to be serious. Um, yeah, big time. So just count our blessings that we weren't in this situation. We got hit in Hatteras hard but nowhere near like those folks to the south of us did. So um, keep those guys in your prayers and, and uh, so forth. So that's all I got. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, are y'all here, and I'll ask you specifically, since you mentioned you had a place over there, in Danny. Um, you know, I know there was a quite a bit of donated stuff up here from Northern <coughs> Beaches, and, and they actually had stuff sitting out on the tarmac over there, and then they said, you know, hold off. We don't need any more supplies. Are y'all still hearing that from from the folks over there that, that they don't need items or stuff shipped over there? Or what, what's, what's going on with they that? Need money. The reason I asked for that yeah. is uh, 
uh, I know a group sent a trailer full of stuff down there, and it's still sitting there that hadn't been sent over to Ocracoke because um, they just said that they were over overwhelmed with, you know, I, I, paper products, uh, water, et cetera. When I was down there last week, they had um, the firehouse was set up like a grocery store, and people come in with boxes and picking paper towels up, bleach, food items, everything. One thing about it, I tell you, when that little island, <laughs> they're close knit, and they are just help, everybody's helping everybody else. There's folks from other areas coming down there. We have churches. We have the Realtors Association sent a bunch of folks down there last week. Churches are down there. The men's uh, Baptist men are down there. The Baptist Methodists, um, the Methodists and the Baptist men are down there. Uh, young lady groups are going down there all the time just helping folks. So it's they have a lot of help, but they, they need a lot of help. A lot of those folks did not have any insurance. That's one problem. And the second problem is they have no vehicles now because all the vehicles were flooded. Yeah. When you get off the ferry at, at Ocracoke on the, at, down at Silver Lake, the first time I went down there, there had been 100 cars over on the left-hand side that were flipped up on their sides, y'all, where everybody put them down there because they thought it was a high point, and it was a high point. But when you got seven foot of water coming across the, the bank, nothing's going to protect those cars. So all their vehicles are gone. Some of them, of course, didn't have um, insurance to replace them, so they've lost their cars, they've lost their houses, they've lost their, um, their clothes. The other thing I want to tell you is we went through with the mitigator in, in my house, the front house, and my wife said, well, I want to save this sideboard. <clears throat> and he said, something you need to understand about, he call, I think he called it a class three flood. And he said, what this means is every sewage treatment plant, every septic system has been compromised on this whole island. He said, so every porous piece of material that's out there automatically it's got bacteria in it, and it's going to have bacteria in it for a long, long time. You don't need that in your home with your little two-year-old granddaughter coming by and doing like this and rubbing her eye or something. Even six months down the road, you might have some contamination there. Well, mm -hmm. So you got to throw everything. That also includes clothes. Okay. That also includes personal items that you have. So these folks have lost everything. Yeah, with this uh, flood, uh, bacteria and stuff like that, it's something I deal with every day. Okay. And it's, you're, you're dead on. I had no idea. Once, once it's done, it's done. It's, you, you got, there's no way to, to treat it to get it back right. It's got to be thrown out. There's just no, yeah. no two ways about it. Plus, one of the things that uh, I know when I, some of the folks I was talking to down there, when the donations started coming hot and heavy, they had nowhere to put it. So that's what, one of the reasons why they were saying hold off on donations because okay. they had absolutely nowhere to put it because of that simple fact. Uh, every, everything down there had been, um, um, I forget the word now, but uh, there was no safe way to put it so that anything that they got would not have bacteria on it because they had no safe place to store any of it. Right. And they were actually just, you know, a lot of donations that were coming, they were putting it right there on the ground because they had nowhere to, to store it. And that's why they were saying hold off till we get... Well, I'm just wondering if they're in a position there to be able to accept. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, they, they have an emergency manager down there, much as like we have Drew, mm -hmm. and his job is to coordinate all that. And so I would tell you that I'm sure they have tremendous needs, but they need to target those needs and that if people want to donate to them, whether it's money or goods or labor or whatever, that they need to work through mm -hmm. uh, the county and talk with their emergency manager over there, and he can then direct that. They may not need you use paper, more paper products, they may need something else, and they'll request those yeah, Just, Just get me that contact information, because I know that there's sure. been a trailer sitting uh, in Hatteras. Justin Gibbs is their, is their emergency manager. I don't have his contact, but I can get it for you. You get it for me, because there's been a trailer sitting at, at Hatteras for weeks <laughs> now that's not been unloaded, and they need to, they need to either bring it back here and give it to... Uh, the food bank or something to take place because I know it's a big tractor trailer. After stuff. after what we went through with Matthew and everything, uh, some of your old uh, diehard home locals said, uh, "I'm raising. I'm getting up out of this. I, I I don't care what it costs. 
Uh, our planning department did a great job with the ICC stuff, the increased cost of compliance. Ocracoke, on the other hand, uh, and, I, and I get it, a lot of people on fixed incomes down there, they did not take advantage of the opportunity like we did. Uh, I know of several people who took out home equity loans just to meet the ICC money. Uh, and it was worth every penny. Yeah. So when I say that they need money, you, you're going to see house raising companies down there, three to four of them, for a couple of years now. And these guys are going to run into some money issues. So some of the churches and stuff that are uh, helping with the donations that have been coming into Cape Hatteras Methodist Men, I mean, their charter says it's strictly for Hatteras, but we're finding some ways to funnel some money down there as well. But, uh, yeah, they, they, they're going to need some money. I will tell you that um, I just got my letter from the Hyde County, and they went and did an assessment of uh, my two houses and determined that they were 50 per, over 50 percent, and that clicked me into the ICC fund. Right. I didn't even know about all this stuff and um, how naive I am. But And so I can apply for the money to, to help to raise the property up. And even on the letter, it says, if you do not do this, you're in violation of the county um, and the federal ordinances. Mm -hmm. So um, they're going to require you to do those things. There were 400 houses had their meters pulled um, out of the 800 that got flooded. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Count. Um, just backing up uh, <laughs> what Urban uh, alluded to. Uh, we were blessed, uh, but we did get hit, and we've we've uh, we've we've learned from the painful lessons of the past, uh, and we took this seriously. The word went out. Uh, I'm so very proud of the emergency management staff. As I said last meeting, uh, of the job that was done, they were the the urgency with this storm was. Uh, quick enough that people took advantage of it and improved their position <laughs> as much as they could to mitigate their losses. Uh, since the last meeting, uh, uh, working with the Baptists on Mission and the Methodist Men, the Catholic Charities, and the various people down there, the list was 333. It's now grown to 463. Uh, uh, in 239 of these properties on Hatteras Island, this was serious stuff. There's uh, their water flooded roof. Uh, mold, as you say, even stuff like cement fiberboard. It is fiberboard, and that is the flooding is such an insidious thing from a health standpoint uh, that you 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 do you have to start over. We got about 50 homeless families down there now, but just like Ocracoke has a great sense of community, uh, Hatteras and Dare County, Greater Dare County, period, uh, also has that sense of uh, family here and and people reaching out, but. Uh, it's just an amazing thing. When this is all said and done, and uh, we're compiling data, uh, emergency management is, is, is working with, these, with, with the Methodist groups, the Baptist on Mission. We're going to be able to glean some lessons out of this of uh, how highly organized this whole effort to get people back on their feet with the early response uh, <laughs> uh, was and will continue to be. And it's just an amazing thing to see uh, this, this Despite the fact that uh, had this occurred, you know, years ago, this would have been an unmitigated disaster. It, it was a storm of record, but uh, we and we took it on the chin. But we we're, we're blessed, even down to the uh, debris removal down there. These guys are moving. They started out out of the gate uh, a little bit ahead of schedule here. Uh, these guys are working 91. They're working 13 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, they're not playing around. Uh, they're out there to get it done, and uh, it's just an amazing thing to see. It's, uh, when this is all said and done, we're going to have seen a really great A effort all the way around. It's impressive. Yeah. That's, that, and that's all I've got. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Toby? Okay. Um, <clears throat> we received the draft permit back from the Corps of Engineers, and uh, Ken Wilson and made a lot of list of comments and uh, little adjustments that they're trying to negotiate. Uh, I sent a copy of it to uh, Jensen Maritime so they could do some input on it. And I also talked to the Corps a little bit about the size of the, the drag heads that they were stipulating in the permit. And we're, we're working to resolve all, the, all of those issues. Uh, Jensen Maritime is only a few weeks away from having the uh, 
final set of plans done on the dredge, so that'll be able to go out to uh, crest, you know, request for proposals uh, here in the next month or two. And uh, an update on the Wanchis Channel dredging project. Uh, they've determined that the area that we need to dredge going into Wanchis is a uh, shellfish restricted zone. <laughs> So they can't take that material and place it anywhere where you're allowed to harvest shellfish. So there's been some feedback. Um, they initially had said doing a placement off of Island C, and, uh, which is a lot of the locals call it slaughter point. It's a big deep hole off of Island <coughs> C. Uh, that, as of right now, has been taken off the table for disposal area. Right now they're looking at probably having to bring in a small pipeline dredge and pumping onto the storage area the right there by the channel. So supposedly today they're going to have more discussion on it and hopefully we'll be able to expedite it better than what they're talking about. Um, other than that, I went down to Hatteras the other day and uh, kind of drove around a little bit and it our, our cleanup crew is really doing a great job down there. And really the only thing left out for the most part, there was a few piles of debris, but most of it was your white goods. And of course, people not listening and having propane bottles and paint cans and I saw, I saw a lot of tires. I saw a gas tank off an automobile. <laughs> I mean, just <laughs> yeah, Sheena's, so. uh, Sheena's meeting as we speak with uh, the debris contractor now. The, the key on those white goods is to get those that propane stuff out of there somehow. But they got a plan that they're putting together this morning so they can go ahead and start picking that stuff Good. up. But they're doing a great job. Yeah. That's all I got. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Roth? I just had one quick item. On November 14th, we will have a State of the Region breakfast at the Hilton with uh, Senator Steinberg and Representative Hannig. And it'll be a legislative briefing, and I'm looking forward to that. That's 8 a.m. on the 14th of November at the Hilton Garden Inn. Thank you, sir. Commissioner House? Uh, this past uh, weekend or weekend before last, the uh, big thing, I don't know if everybody noticed, there was a whole bunch of Jeeps on the beach. And it was the annual Jeep Jamboree. A uh, very good turnout for that. They had over 3,000 people come, come out for the uh, Jeep Jamboree, which is an, another boost to our economy in, in the late off seasons. Um, absolutely outstanding program. Uh, they raised uh, quite, a, quite a few funds for one of the local charities here. Uh, I haven't gotten the total number on that yet, but it, I, from what I understand, it was somewhat substantial. Um, also, the... Uh, okay. Month of October is Domestic Violence Month for awareness. I was at this past weekend. I was at a fundraiser in Pitt County for uh, Eastern North Carolina. It was a fundraiser for uh, victims of domestic violence to help get their lives back started up after they've gotten out of that situation. I am pleased to say that over twenty thousand dollars was raised in that one one night's event. Um, also for uh, October is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, as some of you may know, my daughter has been suffering with breast cancer, and I am proud to say she is now a survivor of breast cancer. Fantastic. Sweet. Um, but on the sad note of that, too, they've also uh, discovered now that uh, we're looking at leukemia. So it has metastasized, so we're going to fight that battle as well. Um, today in history... 1913, I'm sure Chairman Woodard remembers that year quite, quite well. <laughs> <laughs> um, Henry Ford put into implementation of the assembly line. The uh, Ford Model T used to take 12 hours to build. He got it down to 93 minutes. So they were pumping them out. So that was today in history. And that's all I have. Thank you. They're probably pumping them out that fast today. <laughs> Chevy's got it down to 11 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Chevrolet's not doing too good right now. But <laughs> Ford might be doing all right. Thank you, Commissioner House. Commissioner Over. Right on schedule. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just like to uh, do some congratulations here. Uh, number one to Dare Center for their 10-year celebration. Uh, that was uh, quite a 
quite a party they put on, uh, very, done, done very well. Uh, to our service pen recipient, Michelle, for her 15 years of service to Dare County and our employee of the month, Kelly McPherson, and her 14 years of service uh, in every department that uh, I think Dare County has, quite impressive. Also, congratulations to Cape Hatter Secondary School for their Ocean Guardian School Awards. Uh, very nice, again, uh, Dare County schools rising to the top. And thanks again to all who worked on the DHS, COA, and animal shelter projects. That's all I have. Thank you, Vice Chairman. County Manager? Yes, sir, a couple things. Um, one, I told you at the last meeting I'd come to you to get you to formally approve the waiver of the uh, building permit fees for victims of the storm. Um, and so I ask you this morning to authorize, we've done it administratively, but to formally authorize us to do what we've done in previous form and waive uh, those building permit fees for people that are rebuilding as a result of the storm. Okay, pleasure of the board. So moved. Motion on the floor yep. by Commissioner House to approve uh, waiving the fees, seconded by Commissioner Couch. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. like sign. Motion carries unanimous. Uh, Dave has given you some documents, but um, what they are is <coughs> the first one is, is a resolution to designate the applicant's agent, and that would be to designate Dave as a primary agent and Sandy West as our secondary agent to deal with North Carolina Division Emergency Management with regard to the funding and things that we do with regard to the recovery from the storm. And then the second thing is to authorize him to be to execute the applicant disaster assistance agreement as the designated primary agent, uh, again, to help us move forward with the recovery. Need a motion to approve? To approve both of those. Pleasure things. of the board. Move to approve both. <clears throat> motion on the floor to approve both of these by Commissioner House. Is there a second? Second. Second by uh, Vice Chairman Overman and Commissioner Bateman. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. And then last, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to read a letter that I got. Uh, it's a letter that I got from the Emergency Management Institute, U.S. Department of Homeland Security in Emmitsburg, Maryland. And uh, it concerns Dorothy, our public information, and it's it's a really nice achievement on her behalf. You all may know what we talked about a little bit previously, but what it says is I'm pleased to inform you that Dorothy Hester has successfully completed all the requirements needed to achieve the designation of Master Public Information Officer. That's an MPIO. Um, candidates are selected from a nationwide pool of applicants, and the acceptance uh, for this FEMA training is extremely selective. Each applicant must have a minimum of five years' experience and have demonstrated contributions to the advancement of public affairs and external communication. In addition to classroom training and exercise, each participant designs, develops, and presents a research project that contributes to the public information body of knowledge. I congratulate your organization for recognizing the critical role of communications in a whole community and a strategic approach in disaster management. Uh, and thank you for supporting your communications professional in the achievement of this milestone. So congratulations thank to you. Dorothy. This is a, here, here. a, a big deal. Thank you. Is there a cash award for that? I have a get, get some new business cards. Need that M M I M P I O. I have a question. Sure. Was there ever any doubt? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. All right. And then Mr. Chairman, when uh, either now or when you finish, I need to yeah, I'll so come back to you. For a close I'll come back to you. Um, MPIO, do you have anything for the good of the body today? I would just thank you all for allowing me that opportunity because it was three full weeks, and um, but it was beneficial. And actually, when I think we activated for Dorian, and then two uh, <coughs> two weeks later, I completed um, the course in Emmitsburg. But I had completed my research paper that was about flooding. And we were able to implement some of the feedback that we got from the survey when we were communicating. So I, I am thankful for the opportunity, as I said. And I'm glad that I was able to do research that we can apply locally. And that was one of the things I wanted to do. So I appreciate that. Um, Thanksgiving is next, the end of next month, yeah, and Health and Human Services is today starting to take applications for the baskets. Um, there is 
contacts for Hatteras Island that you were mentioning, the folks down there, uh, northern beaches as well, but there are those who can give to provide monetary donations or products for the baskets, but also folks who need help can apply to receive a basket. So that just started today, the application process for those that will be receiving, and I would encourage folks to give if they're able. And there are contacts on the Northern Beach and on Hatteras Island, and that's on our homepage, so. Is there an estimate what a basket would cost, or they have any, or they just make up the basket? So they just looking for donations? In the past, I think we said it was $50. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't check to see if that's changed, but I would I would guess that it's around the same amount. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I will uh, I will ask the clerk, Cheryl, if you will make sure that um, um, our public information officer's nameplate is changed to <laughs> MPIO as well as her business cards. So. Can you, um, you need a motion? No, I don't think I don't think we need a motion to do that. Executive order. That's we'll executive order. That's right. um, thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Congratulations. Thank you. Well deserved. Uh, Dave, you have anything else for us? Um, just, I'm sure we'll have the applicant briefing from Dorian this week um, with the FEMA and North Carolina Emergency Management and. Um, from what I read, I think we got declared for all categories. So if our survey for Buxton shows the sand loss, um, we'll be filing for that one as well. Sweet. And the, the first, um, just so you know, the first big interagency with all the permitting agencies meetings for the next round for Buxton is November the 7th. Great. Good, Good deal. Thank you so much. County Manager, I believe you uh, want to close session. I need a motion pursuant to NCGS 143-31811 for the Board of Commissioners to go in closed session to approve the minutes of the last closed session and pursuant to 143-31811A3 to consult with the attorney employed or retained by the county in order to preserve the attorney in the matter of the opioid litigation. So motion. Motion. Uh, by uh, Commissioner Tobin to go into closed session. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner House. Those in favor, second by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous. I call the Dare County Board of Commissioners meeting back to order. Turn it over to the county manager. Yes, sir. In the closed session, the board approved the minutes and gave the county attorney guidance with regard to the opioid matter. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn motion until to adjourn. 5 p.m. on October the 21st? So motion much. on the floor by Commissioner House, seconded by Commissioner Bateman. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of that signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries unanimous.